Okay, today we're going to do a quick little video about um, the differences between a false morel and uh, a true morel. So, I just, it's the same time of year that I went morel picking last year, but last year is an early season. It's still a little bit too cold here for the morels to pop up. But I went to the spot where I made a video about my picking morels last year. I went back to that spot to check. And this is what I found, and they're popping up everywhere. They look somewhat similar to a, a true morel, but they're not. This is a false morel. And um, this is likely a snowbank morel, which is considered to be a choice morel, or a snowbank false morel, which is considered to be a choice false morel. But it looks so close to the conifer and thick stock morels, and uh, the conifer morel being deadly, that um, it's best just to leave them all alone. So here in, in um, interior British Columbia, it's um, the snow has basically come off everywhere, but the shadows. You, know, you can see up in the mountains above my place. There's still a good amount of snow, but. Uh, down around my place. It's cold, but it, it's it's thawed out. So I'll take a, a trip up to my uh, morel picking spot that I used last year and we'll go take a look, look at what these things look like in the ground. So we're back up here at a spot I was picking morels last spring, you know, third week of April, end of April. And um, I just came up here. Um, it's colder year this year, but I came up here to uh, Take a look, see if any of the black morels come up yet. And I uh, might have to go a little further up the road here. And this is, this is right in the area that I was finding the, the edible choice black morels last year. I come up here and I found uh, these guys, false morels. So I know, I'm, I'm, gives the person an example of how easy it is to get into an area where you've been picking something that's good and then something that looks just like it'll start growing in the same area and a person could perhaps get into a little trouble and eat something like this and um, I believe these are the snowbank false morels like I said before but there's a good chance that they might be the conifer false morel which is a deadly they're, they're they'll kill you so up in here I come and they're all over the place, just like the black morels were last year. Some of these things really do have that brainy look. Oops. Hold it where you can actually see. I didn't bring a knife with me. You can see inside, it's somewhat hollow, but it's also chambered. This isn't the way that a true morel grows. So we know these aren't morels, they're not edible. And even if it was the edible one, the snowbank false morel, they're just too closely related and too similar um, visually to, to really chance eating them just because there's two types that look just like it that are deadly. I see a patch up ahead, so we'll go walk over there. Get a good look at the variety of shapes that these things will come in. There's probably a hundred of them up along this road. There's actually more of them than there were the black morels last year. Get into this group here. I ran these over with my Jeep. And just not the same like I can easily tell I'll put a picture in of what a black morel that I picked last year here looks like and um, you know if you've, if you've picked them before and you know what a, a morel looks like you can tell the difference between a morel and a false morel but if you had maybe your kids come out and you, and you pick them and they're used to getting them in one spot and they go oh, they're a little different color but they look about right and they try to eat them you might, they might actually die so it's really important to uh Make sure people get the difference between the false and the true morels. Well, here's an extra brainy one. Let's see if I can. 
can split this open. I'll have to wash my hands after this. You can see all the little chambers in there. That's how you tell the difference. A true morel will be hollow. I'll put a picture of one that's been split in half to a true morel. So you can see the difference between the chambering of the false morel. And they're just the hollow center of a true morel. And these ones actually look quite a bit like a, a true morel. Okay, my last clip got cut off. My memory card fo was full, so I cleared it out. So I come across two more coming down the road. This one was right here. I just drive down the road and we've seen a couple more out the window, so I figured I'd stop. They're slightly lighter color, but there's still another full smurl. You can uh, see how it's it's got like a variation of colors instead of just one solid gray or brown or black. And inside, it's all chambered again. It really fills out in the ground before it pops up. But uh, here's another example, a slightly different color, but they're definitely not a morel. These are false morel. And uh, we'll go and take a look at my uh, some pictures in my Audubon field guide. And uh, I'll, I'll slip in a couple segments or little clips of what uh, a true morel looks like. Or you can look in my videos and I have uh, Finding Black Morels in BC video that shows you exactly what they look like. So we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I got my Audubon field guide out here. So this here, the thick stalked false morel, very similar. And it doesn't say that it's poisonous. These, these uh, X's with the circle are what denotes a poisonous one. So this conifer here, conifer false morel, and this one here, the gabled false morel, they're both poisonous. And the snowbank one, which is what I believe I have, and to extent, the snowbank here as well, it's got the, dis the color discolor discoloration that uh, some of the ones that I photographed have. But they're all fairly similar, but really close together, and this one will kill you. So that's why I don't eat these. See the other thick stocked one, it could be. So now that we've gone a look at what the different morels, will, the false morels will look like. We'll, uh, we'll cut this one open so we get a better look of what the inside is. And then I'll, I'll throw in those clips I mentioned about what a, a true morel looks like. The inside you can see the chambering really well here with the better cut. And that's your false morel. Well, that's my video on false smells. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, I feel free to like, share, uh, subscribe to my videos, whatever you do. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.